Welcome to the first AP Environmental Science lecture. Uh, this one is over modules one and two in your book, which is pages three through 17. Um, the focus of this lecture is to discuss what environmental science is and is not. In environmental science, we will be looking at all of these things at various points during the course. Um, so we're going to start off with biology and ecology, which is hopefully stuff you remember. And then later on, we'll talk about um, earth science, toxicology, um, and atmospheric sciences. But we will also be including the law, politics, and policy portions as well. Um, so this graphic gives you, you know, an idea of what all we will be looking at throughout our time together. What we know is that humans alter natural systems. Um, we do this by converting land uh, into use for us, whether that be homes, schools, businesses, things like that. And in doing so, we, we are altering the air, water, and soil chemistry, as we will see uh, later on. Um, environmental science are able to monitor the disruptions to the systems and look for signs of stress by looking at five key indicators, um, biological diversity or biodiversity, food production, temperature and CO2 concentrations, human population size, and resource depletion. These environmental indicators let us know the current state of an environmental system, so like whether it's healthy, unhealthy, and so on. What we know about biodiversity is the recent trend is we have large numbers of extinctions, uh, more than normal. And this overall has a negative impact. Food production is increasing, and we are not quite sure how that will impact our Earth just yet. It may lead to us being able to support more humans or not. We also know that the average temperatures and CO2 concentrations are increasing. The human population is increasing, even though the growth rate is slowing um, and resources, natural resources are being depleted at a high rate. Next, we're going to look at these individually. Um, so when we talk about biodiversity or biological diversity, we can look at it on three levels. The first being genetic. So how much genetic diversity is um, present in an ecosystem? We can also look at species diversity, which is like how many different species are in an area um, and ecosystem diversity. So how many different habitats are present in an area? And all three of those are important to biodiversity. We will examine this more in units one and two for this course. Um, the second thing which we will look at more in unit five is food production. So we now have the ability to grow enough food for our population, but even though that is the case, millions of people are still experiencing food insecurities across the globe. This is not an issue of developed versus developing nations. Um, it, it happens all over the world. We are using science and technology to increase our food production. And so this graph is the world grain production, as we can see, has increased since the 1950s reasonably well. The other thing uh, which we will talk way more about in Unit 9 is that our global surface temperatures and CO2 concentrations are increasing at a relatively alarming rate. This graph has um, CO2 concentrations in blue, and then the global temperatures are there in orange. Greenhouse gases, however, are important to our Earth. Um, they are gases that trap heat in our atmosphere, which we do need, otherwise our planet would be too cold for us to live on. The problem is with an increase in greenhouse gases, it's trapping more and more heat, which is bad. Uh, we but again, we will talk about that more in unit nine. This is just an overview of what you should expect. The other thing that we will get to in unit three is that our human population is giant. 
Currently, it is over 7 billion, and we still are experiencing exponential growth. So that's that, remember that J-shaped curve from math? Um, it's leveling off some, but we still have a pretty large number of births and deaths every day on our planet. And uh, something to look forward to in Unit 6 is to talk about our resource depletion. What we know is that the way resources are used and the types of resources that are used are different in developed and developing countries. In this graphic here, you can see that the green color shows resource use by people in developed nations and then the tan is for developing. Something that is maybe not surprising to you is things like automobiles and trucks and paper are way have a, have a much higher usage in developed nations but then when we look at food for example it's going to be a little bit higher in developing nations because we generally see that the population sizes of developing nations are higher than in developed nations we'll talk more about that later but that that's a for sure thing. Total energy wise, developed nations are using a little bit more than developing nations, which is not surprising because we have things like, you know, factories, lots of car use, airplanes, things like that. So the real focus here is can we live sustainably um, and be able to use our earth for as long as possible? So sustainability is just allowing humans to use resources, but we are not depleting them so that future generations will also be able to use them. So some things that we need to consider here are what do we actually need to survive? So these are needs over wants and how much waste do we generate? You know, like how much food are we throwing away at the end of the week because it went bad before it got eaten? Um, how much other trash and plastic and things goes out in the trash? And with that, as we will calculate later, we can talk about ecological footprint. So that's how much a person consumes that's expressed in land. So when we do this, it will generate like this thing that says if everyone in the world lived like you, it would take 2.5 Earths for everyone to live like you do. Um, what we do know is that Earth uses all the resources it should in a year, usually sometime in July or August. Um, I can pull up this year's data to share with you in class sometime. Um, but but it is quite alarming that we, we are using so many more resources than we should be because what does that leave for the future? Um, and so your footprint is based on your energy use, where you live, how much timber and paper you use, the kinds of things you eat, and all that kind of stuff. So there's a lot to look forward to in this class. I hope I haven't uh, bored you or made you scared, um, but I'm really excited that you're here and I can't wait to share um, all of the cool things that our planet has to offer with you during this course.